Today, I am headed to the beautiful island of Kohai. The regular ferry to the island is not currently running. To get there, we hire a local fisherman. There's a storm coming our way. Dark clouds are gathering into the horizon. Our long tail boat captain drops us off on the beach. He turns around and disappears quickly into the ocean. You should know that the reef and rocks surround the island. And the best time to navigate here is at high tide. At high tide, the beach of Kohai disappears. So we stand on a sliver of sand with all our belongings. <laughs> I'm excited to discover this tiny island and share the information with you. Let's go! Kohai is a tiny island in the Andaman Sea. There are only a few resorts and one main beach area. Almost all the hotels are built along the main beach. Kohai is only about 4 kilometers or 2.5 miles long and 2 kilometers or about a mile wide. There are no roads here, no stores, no ATMs or motorized vehicles. There is no public electricity either and the hotels rely on diesel generators. Kohai has clear aquamarine water and powdery coral sand. Most of the island's rugged interior is overgrown with a thick jungle and is not accessible. We are surrounded by other small islets, which makes the views very picturesque. It rained for three days straight during our visit. The rain was mostly soft and relaxing. There was a lot of wind. And so we hit the beach in the rain. We made a point to walk the long stretch of sand from end to end at least once a day, taking advantage of the low tide. As soon as the tide goes out, the beach is large enough to cross the island from end to end, which takes a good 30 to 40 minutes. The widest stretch of sand is found to the south of the island, although it's hardly wide enough to play frisbee at high tide. The northern end of the beach disappears completely and the hotels here are built on top of seawalls made of stacked sandbags to help with the waves. The beach reveals itself again at low tide. There are lots of stones and corals. And shells. Shells inside of shells. You can find many beautiful sea treasures on the beach. Yeah, look at him go. Mm -hmm. Look at the little guy. He's so funny. Oh. This guy is dragging a huge fish on a rope behind him. He just found it on the beach. We saw giant squid and fish stuck on the rocks at low tide. Mm -hmm. nature everywhere you look. The jungle growing over the island is amazing. Look at how tall some of those trees are. Breathtaking. The mountainous rainforest is inhabited by sea eagles, monitor lizards, snakes, geckos and bats. This island is also home to large families of hornbills. They come flying from tree to tree along the beach. The monitor lizards seem to feel as happy on the water as they are on land. They steer their body with their tail when they swim. There is so much nature to take in and observe. Every afternoon at low tide, I would sit on the beach and watch these tiny ghost crabs scurry around and duck into tiny sand holes. Very entertaining! I would sit on the beach and watch the changing landscape.
We were on Kohai during a storm. Only two hotels were open. We chose to stay at the beautiful Taporin Resort, and I'm glad we did. The bungalows here are nice and kept as close to nature as possible. Despite the bad weather, we had a great time in the serene environment. Mornings were my favorite time of the day. A delicious breakfast is served here on this gorgeous veranda looking at the sea. Chef Jack made sure to provide us with fantastic food all day long, starting with the healthy breakfasts and going on to delicious dinners. Good. Imagine yourself sitting out here enjoying your morning coffee. Amazing, isn't it? The sea breeze and surrounding islands made the atmosphere so romantic, even on a stormy day. What a magical place. My heart fills with joy when I think of this veranda. I can sit here all day listening to the soft raindrops. Nowhere to go. Nothing to do. Nothing to worry about. You're welcome to sit with me here for a second. Suck in the view and feel the wind on your skin. Just for a minute, pretend the rest of the world doesn't exist. This can be your happy place. In the afternoon, Kun Pat prepared some special peach flower tea for us. Pat is from Chiang Mai and is used to the big city life. She shared with me that ever since she came to Koh Hai, her heart has been set on this tiny island. If you visit Koh Hai, please say hi to Kun Pat for me. We were the only guests on the entire island. No other people could reach Koh Hai during the storm. After a couple of days, two more guests showed up. They had booked a room on the other side of the beach at Tanya Resort. The south side of the beach is much wider. There is a hiking trail behind Tanya Resort that leads to Paradise Beach. Unfortunately, when we visited Koh Hai, there had not been many tourists on the island for a year and the jungle had overgrown the path. We were told that there are cobras on the island and that we need to be careful if we decide to cross over the jungle. So we decided to skip Paradise Beach. The island has one pier. It only serves Koh Hai Resort. If you get off here, there is no way for you to walk to the other hotels with your luggage. At low tide, you can walk around the rocks in front of Tanya Resort to reach Kohai Resort. This trail is available only at low tide. The path is strenuous and rocky. It's not difficult to climb up the forest, even in flip-flops. Just walk carefully. The beach at Kohai Resort is rockier. As with the other hotels, the jungle starts right behind the property. All the hotels on Koh Hai have carved themselves a small piece of land between the jungle and the ocean. If you're coming on this side of the island, make sure to leave before dark. After sunset, the rocky trail is pitch black and you can easily hurt yourself. The outdoor lights at Taporin create a very romantic night atmosphere. The darkness of the beach and the sounds of the jungle are wonderful. On our last night, the wind finally came down, so we sat on the beach and observed the moon for a while. Life is full of magic, and I'm so grateful for this experience. Kohai is supposed to have good snorkeling around the island. When the waves slowed down a bit, we jumped in the water. But the sandy bottom was still agitated, and the visibility was really bad. We did not see anything and did not find the corals, only big rocks across from the beach. A couple of tiny fishes were swimming around. The bad visibility, the current and waves discouraged us to go very far. If your main priority is snorkeling on Koh Hai, we were told that the best spots are in front of Tanya Resort, Kait Muk Tong Resort and Coco Cottage. There is also a shallow reef in front of Koh Hai Resort. This is supposed to be a good place for kids and beginners because the corals are very close to the beach. From Kohai, you can snorkel around Kochuek, Kowaen, and Koma. Those are three tiny islets surrounding Kohai. You can also visit the Emerald Cave on Komuk and snorkel the beautiful reef of Kokradan and Korok on a day trip. How to get there? Kohai is part of the Kumu Lanta National Marine Park. Technically, this island is located in the province of Krabi, but it's easier to reach the islands from the province of Trang. Kohai is known as a Trang Island together with Komuk and Kokradan. In high season, from October to April, you can catch a speedboat from Krabi, 
Koh Lanta, Phuket, and from Trang. Depending on weather conditions, you can also hire a long tail boat from the nearby Kumuk and Kukradan. The closest airport is in Trang, and the closest pier on mainland is Pakman Pier, about an hour away from Kohai. When to go? The best time to visit Kohai is between November and April, when the weather is sunny and hot. I was there the first few days of December. It rained for three days straight. The island is lovely, even in the rain. Kohai is subject to the same monsoon as the rest of Thailand's southwest coast. The rainy season runs from May to October. The national park shuts down and most resorts are closed. Where to stay? Kohai is not a budget destination. Most resorts are quite expensive. This is because hotels need to generate their own electricity 24-7 via diesel generators. Also, everything the hotels offer, food, drinks, water, comes from mainland and is carried by long-tail boats, which is also expensive. Some of the best resorts on the island include Cliff Beach Resort, Tapwarin Resort, Coco Cottage, Kite Muktong Resort, Fantasy, Maya Lei, and Tanya Resort. There is also a tented camp you can stay at and save money. On our last day, the sun peeked behind a thick layer of clouds for the first time in three days, and the tiny island transformed in front of our eyes. As soon as the sun rays hit the water, the beach looked like a postcard. I understand why so many people love this place. Kohai is more secluded than other islands. There are not many hotel options here and fewer tourists. And when the sun shines, the island looks beautiful. I see our long tail boat approaching the hotel. Time to jump aboard towards Kokradan. Many thanks to Kun Pat, Chef Jack, Kun Jay, and the entire staff at Tapuarin Resort for taking such good care of us during our stormy stay. If anyone goes to Tapuarin, please say hi to the staff for me. If you have been to Kohai and have tips or impressions to share, please list them in the comments below this video so others can read about your experience. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support. Without you, this channel wouldn't be possible. See you soon! Thank you.